Live from the Mission Bay Conference Center in San Francisco, California. It's The Cube at Google Cloud Platform Live. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. You're watching theCUBE live in San Francisco at Google's developer conference. It's called the Google Cloud Platform Live event. Breaking out from I.O. to get their own event, a lot of stuff, so many updates going on. They're going to have their own event and continue to pound the pavement. I'm John Furrier, the, the founder of Silicon Angel. My co-host Jeff Frick, our next guest, is Stephen O'Grady, co-founder, principal analyst at Redmond. Big fan of the firm, James Governor. I was just on the on Twitter meeting calling out. Someone said that App Engine was the first pass layer, and then they were recorrected here on the cube. Stephen, welcome back. Thank you. Good <laughs> so, to be here. So James jumped on the not my little tweet like, "Oh, they just said App Engine was the first yeah. pass layer." I'm like, uh, "No, maybe." And then he, they corrected and said the first real pass layer that had traction. So interesting how they, you know, they talk about that. But uh, shout out to James. Good, good catch. Uh, what's going on, Redmond? What's going on with the developers here? Give us the scorecard. Uh, scorecard is basically that uh, the things that we've been saying for a long time are now finally popular. Uh, in other words, when we were running around 10 years ago saying that developers were the more, most important con uh, constituency in technology, people said we were crazy. And you come to events like this and it's all developer, developer, developer. It's all people want to talk about it. And, and I think a lot of the announcements you know, at the show today reflect the fact that like Amazon, like all the other public cloud players, the essentially intent is to compete for developer mindship and to try to give developers what they want. Everyone has this bumper sticker, gotta win the developers. I mean, that's kind of like a weird statement, winning the developers. Developers have their own muscle right now. Yeah, so I guess if you were gonna say, how do you win the developers, which means win them over, yep. uh, in an open source framework, which is now the standard kind of ethos, how do you do that? I mean, how do you kind of ingratiate into the developer community if you're, certainly IBM's trying happily and HP, sure. well, what, how do you do that? The, the simplest way is, is honestly convenience, right? So in other words, you, you come to conferences like this, everybody always wants to talk about features and engineering and performance and scalability. All those things are great, all those things are wonderful. At the end of the day, the thing that more often than not wins the day from the developer perspective is convenience. Right? In other words, you know, we use this analogy all the time. If you think about the public cloud, in almost every case, you know, the virtual instance that you spin up on a cloud is going to perform worse than a physical equivalent. The difference is the physical equivalent, best case you can have it in a day, you know, probably you're looking at days to weeks. And I can spin up an instance or uh, more importantly, thousands of, thousands of instances in 90 seconds. So you know, from our perspective, trying to get out of their way, give them the things that they want, and then... Yeah. Faster you know, time to beer. That's right. I mean, that's basically the algorithm. That's right. <laughs> we know that developers like to drink beer and tea from our analytics. That's what we do uh, at our conferences. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just drink beer. So, so, so convenience means a lot of things, basically time, yeah. energy, getting down and dirty and on stuff they don't want to do. That's right. And that's where the DevOps thing kicked in, where we're hearing here, cloud, like, okay, I'm going to abstract away the network stuff from the app developers, make the network guys do their thing. Right. So how far are we in on this revolution there? Uh, I, I think it's still actually early days. Uh, in other words, I think a lot of the technology has come a long way. Um, there's a guy by the name Flip Cromer, we use this quote all the time where, you know, essentially the cloud means that anybody with a $10 bill, you know, can have a 10 node cluster with a terabyte of distributed storage for eight hours. And if you think back five or six years ago, I mean, that was literally incomprehensible. If you wanted any of that, you'd have to go out and wait weeks and spend lots of money. You know, we can do that now. Um, all that being said, you know, the quality of the tools and the quality of the implementation, there's a long way to go, right? We're still figuring out, all right, we have all these wonderful tools. How do they fit together? Where, where do I use this? Where do I use that? You know, how do I sort of sift through all the available um, options at my disposal and make things easier? So I'll get your perspective on this. We, Dave and I always talk, and Jeff, when we're on theCUBE, is, is that there's a great tsunami of organic growth, certainly on the developer side. You guys have been really the best analyst firm out there covering the developer angle and watching you guys for a long time and you're number one in that area. And they're certainly awesome. You just, you don't have to rack and stack and get a startup up and running and do a project. As you said, it's not ideal, but it's good enough and you get the job done and you're fast, right? Uh, and then you got on the other side, infrastructure massive shifting going on. So is there a glass ceiling here where we're all kind of bumping our heads saying, 
that's the down and dirty you said convenience. Now we're at, okay, I got my app up. Now my boss wants to fund it right. beyond POC. I got a role in the production. And these guys over here got this new converged infrastructure box. Mm -hmm. That's changing everyone's role from TBA. To storage admin goes away because yeah, there's yeah. no more storage. Yeah. So, I mean, you got this massive like shift. What is that ceiling? Are we hitting that yet? Uh, I don't know about a ceiling. I mean, I think you know part of what organizations are struggling with now is you know, they recognize that, look, we can do things faster with the cloud. The question is, you know, you can't have everybody spinning up their own instances on different clouds and expect to have any sort of central visibility, accountability, uh, you know, cost control and so on. So we're beginning to see sort of the early days of, all right, look, developer, you want to use the cloud, that's fine, but you need to do it through central accounting, you need to do it through centralized tooling, such that I have some idea of what's going on. I want to give you what you want, I want to get out of your way, I want you to be productive, but you have to give me something in return, which is, again, some accountability, some visibility some into some record. What's being spun up? Well, it's interesting. Yeah, that's a great point. We just had the Forrester guys on earlier, and we brought up the Amazon dominance, calling them the Secretariat thundering away, <laughs> still winning. Yeah. Um, and certainly Google bringing this play where they got the large scale back end saying, so if you get lucky yeah. in this, I'm feeling lucky mindset, you know, you get pops and back end scale quickly. That's a great, love that vision. However, the CIA is now moving aggressively, 100% on Amazon. They're going to announce next week that CIA is going to go all-consuming. Right. Another government agency has Corner Forrester saying that has that has actually the big issue because of one reason: accountability mm -hmm. and essentially, you know, answering to voters. Right, right, right. So now that mindset comes to the enterprise. So is that what is that trend hit the enterprise? Certainly, that can make sense on the government side. Spend less. Do more yeah, yeah. and show me what you've done. Well, it, we're always asked by you know press among other people, you know, hey, is the private cloud a real thing? And, and my answer to that always is, you know, let's think about the characteristics of a public cloud, right? It's elastic, it's quickly provisioned. You know, you have granular billing and so on. Why would you not want your private infrastructure to have those characteristics, right? So, yes, on some level, you know, we're going to see a lot of the public cloud elements infiltrate. You know, we typically thought about the enterprise data center. The question is, how much is going to be public versus how much is going to be private? You know, because look, at the end of the day, you know, the, the reality is, is that, you know, the Googles, the Amazons, the Microsofts, and so forth of the world are probably going to be better at running these data centers than most private organizations, and I don't care how big they are. So that's the question in terms of, it's not whether private infrastructure looks like cloud, it's what the percentage the is in terms of adoption. All right, so we, got, we had a, a joke earlier on theCUBE called the hot tub time machine IT, <laughs> where uh, uh, you drop uh, in to the 80s, yeah. and you have client server infrastructure, your IT staff still got the storage admin, right. who hates the network admin, yeah, and, yeah. and they really have no development force, it's all been outsourced, right? Yep. And that carried into the 90s, and so that being said, Great, virtualization came along, great. Server consolidation, a right. little boost, a little, little steroid shot. Yep. But now there's a huge demand for enterprises to hire developers. We want to bring it in-house, almost during like the heydays of the mainframe days where in-house development is cool and, and being invested in. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of been realized, people kind of agreeing with that general direction. Right. So I got to ask you, how does an enterprise who really has not have a core competency, I'm not talking about the financial guys, yeah. those guys are always kicking yeah. ass, right? Yep. Your traditional enterprise, right. you know, stuck in the 90s IT, or give them 2001 maybe, or they got to boot up fast. Mm -hmm. what, what do you guys advise your, those practitioners? You know, what do they do? I mean, just, <laughs> I mean, it seems difficult. Yeah, we, it's funny, we had a, uh, we were on a conference every year in October called the Oktoberfest. We had uh, uh, Adrian Cockroft come speak. So, uh, you know, the CUBE listeners may or may not be familiar with Adrian. He's one of the original architects at Netflix. Um, you know, alum. He's been on the, yeah. Yeah, he's been on sure many yeah, times. Yeah. Very, very good guy, very smart guy. Um, he's anyhow, been on Twitter too. The fun, yeah, he's very good on Twitter. The funny thing is, is that, you know, he apparently has organizations, he's left uh, Netflix, he's now over at Battery. So he's a lot of organizations coming to him and saying, where do you get these people? Like Netflix is this like special unicorn and you know, you can go off and sort of run only cloud and so on. Like, where are you finding the developers, you know, that, you know, can build this stuff? And his response is that, we heard them from you. Like none of your businesses would let them do the things that they want to do, That's a great and name. therefore they come to work for us as we get out of their way. So outward migration from the enterprise, but now how do they get them back? It's like living in North Dakota. It's like everyone leaves as soon as they go to college, and they never come back, right? So Honestly, like, the, the no way... offense to North Dakota, but I mean, great place to fish, maybe. But I mean, how do you get? How do they get them back? Do they? Is there a way you found that? Because that's a real you, strategic imperative. Honestly, you get out of the way. 
really. You, you, you get out of their way. And like I said, you know, it's, it's not just sort of inmates running the asylum, like let them do whatever they want. But on some level, there are certain tools, there are certain things that they want to do. They're probably going to be cloud. They're probably going to include open source. They're probably going to include a lot of things that maybe your organization is or isn't comfortable with. So you can either say, no, you can't use these things and see them all sort of run off. Or you can say, all right, you know what? You're going to use these things, probably be more productive and faster and more efficient in the process. So yeah, I'll just get out of your way. What's your take on legacy migration? Old apps running on old boxes that you know may or may not have a benefit. You know, sure. it's, it, obviously, if it's new development, it's great, great environment, yeah, easy yeah. to spin up. But it, you know, if the guy in, in North Dakota is stuck just running old systems, sure. that you no, know, are they just eventually going to die? Do they do they last forever? Like the airplane reservation system? I mean, what happens to those? Things? Honestly, a lot of those things are never going to move. Um, just flat, never going to move. You know, it's and even it, should they, right? Even, you know, not work, really. You know, it's, not really. In other words, you know, every year Oracle and sort of other you know, sort of suppliers to a lot of those those enterprise legacy applications, you know, will raise prices. And the press comes to us and says, "Hey, is this when everybody sort of runs out and you know, sort of leaves them?" And our answer is, "Look, let's walk through this." In other words, sure, the prices went up, but the cost of moving is a lot higher than the price hike, right? And for legacy applications, are there advantages, you know, both sort of from a functionality and agility standpoint, as well as a cost standpoint, in some cases to moving towards the cloud? Sure, but in other words, are you willing to bear the risk, right? I mean, again, it becomes a cost benefit. If I have this application that's been running forever, uh, you know, the airline reservation system runs fine where it is, we know how to maintain it, we know how to manage it, the risk of moving that is very, very high. So if the risk is high, the benefit you know, to moving it has to be that much higher. Right, right. In a lot of cases, we're just not going to be there. So a lot of the, I mean, you see conferences like this, uh, you know, all the public cloud conferences, a lot of what they're talking about are net new workloads, right. as opposed to, hey, let me you know, take that thing that you've been running for 30 years and move it into a cloud. Move it, right. So the hardest question I want to ask you, this is a tough one, so brace right. yourself, it's controversial. Um, I see you wearing your Red Sox hat. I was going to say, better so, be about the know, Red Sox. You know, Love my Giants. I've co-opted that team because I moved out here 15 years. But I'm a diehard Red Sox fan. They give away their best pitcher. Yeah. What's going on? Give no us idea. the analysis. Break it down for us. I them. never understood that deal see. from the from the get go. Why they got uh, Sasquatch is a great player. He's fun to watch. But uh, yeah, you trade away your best player and you, for a guy with one year service time. I, I trust Harrington, in spite of the fact that he went to Amherst. But yeah, I never understood that. I thought you were going to ask him to lay off on getting Pablo. I thought that was the question. <laughs> Yeah. I think they're going to renew I, I like the Panda, but I think he ends up back with San Francisco. So what it, what's your prospects for next year for the Sox? Uh, I think they're actually in good shape. The farm system's really good. Uh, the lineup will be much improved. They'll have to trade some of the outfielders, get some pitching. But uh, yeah, I throw a couple pitchers in there, improved lineup. I'm a Bruins I'm fan. Char is injured still. I think I know, he's yeah. out, so Bruins don't look good. Yeah. Uh, well, the December. Giants are awesome here. You know, of course, I'm reliving that, uh, reliving one of my Red Sox back to back, my two favorite teams. Um, how's James doing over there at Red Monk? James doing very well. Yeah, James doing very well. He's like we all are, just running around, we got conferences and engagements and speaking engagements and so on. So yeah, yeah, we're all busy. But uh, so, what's the coolest thing you've seen here at Google? Uh, Cloud platform live. Coolest thing I've seen here, probably the the, it's it's not terribly surprising. I think one of the more important things I think we'll see out of this is the um, uh, essentially the container um, uh, components. In other words, having a container engine, Docker for for uh, those of you who have not seen us say this before. Out of all the technologies we've tracked at Redmond over the years, we've been around since '02. This is easily top two or three in terms of quickest growing. Docker or uh, Docker, Docker. Docker. Okay, Docker. Um, Docker more specifically. So, you know, basically having a, a system for the maintenance and orchestration and management uh, of Docker containers and giving developers, again, what they want in Docker uh, is a big deal. What's number one, historically? Uh, it's a good question. I don't know. We'd have to look. No, uh, Node.js was very, very quickly growing. Um, it's not number one, the top three. Fill out the top yeah, three. Yeah, I don't know. What would be three? Awesome. Well, we're going to get you guys briefed on our crowd chat application, which is all node in the cloud. There Pretty badass, real-time database. Um, any other predictions uh, for the show? Ooh, predictions for the show? Uh, uh, people are going to like it? I, I, think, like it? I think they'll like it. In other words, you know, Google historically has done a pretty good job of giving developers what they want. Um, they have a lot of expertise. And like I said, I think they're, they're uh, you know, obviously, Based on the investors, based on announcements, I think taking it, the market seriously. So, yeah, I think they'll like what You think they're see. pushing fast enough, or you think they're just taking their time with the Army first waves coming in? Well, I mean, in other words, I think they have to look at it and say, you know, you're not going to necessarily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 
say in Amazon, you know, from a feature perspective. Because you know, I think it was 2013, I want to say, Amazon dropped 230, 240 individual features. Um, and none of the cloud providers are going to compete with that. So, you know, if you're trying to sort of make up ground, basically you, you try to figure out, all right, what are we good at, what do we focus on? Um, and particularly, you look at their container strategy, they know how to do this, they've been running containers forever. You have Kubernetes, uh, you know, managing Docker containers, which developers love, that's a good place to start. Are you surprised by the speed of how much things are shifting right now from a vendor landscape? I mean, OpenStack <laughs> seems to be on its heels, you know, this is kicking ass, Docker, you said, just first on the scene, goes kicking ass, yeah. you got Kubernetes, a lot of pressure, VMware almost chameleon and all this. Um, we're actually, it's interesting that you ask that, because we're beginning to track a little bit of a, a backlash is probably an overstatement, but things are changing so quickly, the developers are actually having a difficult time keeping up, right? So you have web developers, and I wrote about this a little while ago, Marco Arment, who's, um, uh, I don't know, probably like eight or nine at Tumblr, uh, created Instapaper, you know, very, very high profile uh, developer, wrote not too long ago, he's like, I'm actually tired of being a web developer. There's too much to keep track of, there's too much going on. So we're beginning to see a little bit of uh, hassle factor. fatigue. Yeah, you know, it's not convenient. I have too many tools, look, I just want to build something. I don't want to have to figure out how all these things work together. So am I surprised by how quickly things are changing? Not necessarily surprised, and that reaction I think will be, we'll see a lot more. We're certainly seeing that in the social media space as well. People want another platform and tool like a whole in there. Uh, they want uh, more convenience. Yeah, yeah convenience speed. All right, Stephen O'Grady from Red Monk here inside the cube, breaking it down. Developers, developers, developers. There you go. Uh, and they want convenience. They don't want another tool and another platform to figure out. They want convenience, faster time to not value, faster time to beer, as we say. So That's this is exactly the cube. Right. We're gonna have a beer shortly. It's wrapping up towards the end of the day. Stay with us. We have more coming here live in San Francisco. Google's cloud platform live. Their developer conference in San Francisco. We'll be right back after the short break.